The murder of Mary Wertheimer's infant child in 1892 was widely covered in the papers, with new details constantly emerging. Mary's case is discussed briefly by Janet Galley in her Infanticide in the American Imagination. Galley writes that, even though it quickly became apparent that she had not killed her infant, newspapers continued to report on Wertheimer's actions and focus their report on the woman's immoral lifestyle. According to the published stories, 17-year-old Wertheimer had had a long association with criminal elements in the city and had borne an illegitimate child three months earlier. When the child proved to be too much of an interference in her daily life, she gave the baby to a known thief who promised to make arrangements for it. The media accounts of the infant's disappearance and the delay in finding the child's body sparked intense public interest in the crime, and the newspaper reports held Wertheimer morally, if not legally, responsible for her child's death. Although she was ultimately found not guilty for her role in the murder, and her two male co-defendants were convicted and sent to Sing Sing for the crime, the popular press never reported on the final verdict in Wertheimer's trial. The press had already tried her in the court of public opinion and found her to be guilty. A very small article did appear in the Evening World on February 3, 1893, announcing Mary's freedom, but compared to the coverage before, it might as well have not been printed. Saturday, May 7, 1892, The Brooklyn Citizen, Ghastly Crime, A Three-Months-Old Child Buried Alive. The conspiracy entered into between Adam Haas, Peter Schultz, and Mary Wertheimer, the mother of the little one, the three under arrest. A three-months-old child that was foully murdered by being buried alive is the latest crime in the 6th precinct. Unlike previous murders, in this case the mother of the child is under arrest, and so are the two men that killed the innocent little one. Mary Wertheimer, 17 years old, was the mother of the child. She says that Albert Kraft, living in Olive Street near Manhattan Avenue, was its father. The men who killed it are Adam Haas and Peter Schultz, of number 14 Bremen Street, where Mary Wertheimer also lived. Haas and Schultz have both served time in the penitentiary. This is the story told by the police. Three months ago, the girl left the home of her parents at number 157 Borum Street to live with Mrs. Barbara Haas, the mother of the man under arrest for murder. Three days later, she gave birth to the child that was killed. Almost from the date of its birth, the girl had been trying to rid herself of her offspring. She made unsuccessful efforts to have it admitted to the Foundling Asylum in New York. She also, from time to time, made proposition to Adam Haas to kill the child. Two months ago, the girl met Schultz. He knew the Haas family, and he became attentive to the young mother. He took up his residence in the Haas house. When the girl proposed to Schultz that he dispose of the child, he promised that he would. He tried to have it admitted to several institutions in this city, but the little one was refused admission because of its sickly condition. A week ago, she told Schultz and Haas that the child must be disposed of. The two men concocted the scheme of drowning the child in Newtown Creek. The Haas family with the girl and Schultz then lived at number 56 Morell Street. On Monday night, the men agreed to kill the little one that night. Mrs. Haas knew nothing of the terrible crime that was about to be committed. The mother of the child, although she denies emphatically that she knew the intentions of the men, was doubtless the most prominent actor in the disposition of her child. At 11 o'clock on Monday night, the little child, which had been peacefully slumbering, was awakened by its mother and dressed. She then gave the child to Schultz and Haas and they left the house. What transpired was told to Coroner Lindsay by Schultz and Haas this morning. It appears that after the men left, they walked through Morell Street to Johnson Avenue. When they reached the railroad tracks, they walked along the ties, and when near Newtown Creek, the little one began to cry. Schultz, so Haas says, tried to stifle its cries by choking it. 
Failing in this, he took off some of the child's underwear and tried to strangle it. Then the child began to scream when Schultz, it is said, ran over to the fetid waters of the creek near the railroad track and held the little one's head under the water for several minutes. Both men, believing that the child was dead, tied a rope around its neck and then fastened a stone to it. Just as they were about to sink the child into the creek, its life returned, and the moan which escaped from its lips alarmed Schultz, and he refused, so he says, to act any further. Haas then suggested that they bury the child. They crossed the creek by way of the railroad track to a spot on the Queens County side of the creek, near where the new stone bridge is being built, and on a straight line out from Messerol Street. Haas dug a hole in the mud. While he was digging, the child, which still had life in it, began to moan again. The men dropped the child into the hole and covered it with mud. They returned home at three o'clock on Tuesday morning, and after washing their hands, they awoke Mary Wertheimer and told her that the child was in a place where it would never be any bother to her again. The brutal crime might have remained undiscovered had not the Haas family moved away on Wednesday to the Bremen Street house. A neighbor of the family had missed the child and asked the mother where it was. She replied that she had taken it to an institution. The neighbor whose name the police will not divulge was suspicious and began detective work. While in a saloon yesterday where Schultz and Haas were drinking beer, he overheard them speaking of the murder of the child. This man at once sought Detectives Campbell and Lyons and an investigation was begun. The detectives learned that Schultz and Haas had gone to Queens County to work but would return last night. The detectives laid in wait for the men and early this morning they arrested them at the Bremen Street house along with Mary Wertheimer on suspicion of murder. The trio stoutly maintained that the child had not been murdered but had been taken to an institution in New York. After close questioning by the detectives, Schultz broke down and confessed. He told how the scheme was concocted to kill the child. He put all the blame on Haas and said that the latter had tried to choke the child, strangle it, drown it, and finally buried it alive. Haas, on the other hand, contradicted all that Schultz had said and put all the blame on him. The young mother denied that she knew anything of the murder and said that when the men went away with the child on Monday night, she thought they were going to take it to an institution. Coroner Lindsay was notified and at three o'clock this morning he reached the police station and the men and women repeated their previous statements. Schultz told where the child was buried and the detectives went to the spot at daybreak today and found a small piece of callus which Mary Wertheimer identified as a portion of the underwear her child had on when she last saw it. A brother of Haas went to the police station at 7 o'clock this morning and expressed his willingness in order to shield himself and his mother from all participation in the crime by helping to dig the spot where the child was buried. He went along with the detectives, Sergeant Brown and Policeman Hall, Schultz, heavily shackled, was also taken along to point out the spot where the child was buried. At noon today, the body had not been found, but it was expected soon would be. Schultz said that on account of the darkness on the morning they killed the child, he didn't know the exact spot. To a citizen reporter, Schultz said that Albert Kraft was the father of the child. Schultz added that on the night of the crime, he was very drunk and that Haas did all the business. Schultz did not appear to realize the enormity of his crime, for he laughed and smiled alternately while telling of the struggles of their victim. He said that Mary Wertheimer insisted to him and Haas that the child must be killed. When a reporter saw the girl, she at first denied Schultz's story and then admitted that the child had bothered her very much and she had grown tired of it. She said it was a boy and anyway, she added with a sneer he was sick all the time. The prisoners are locked up in the Stag Street Station, and the police say 
that a colder lot of murderers have never been in that precinct.